let's say that you go for a drive in your car. Occasionally, you just randomly make a turn here, you randomly make a turn there. After doing that for a couple of hours, you're going to be somewhere, but it might not be your intended destination. Contrast that with planning ahead. What if you programmed into your car's navigation system the actual coordinates or the address of where you wanted to go and you let that navigation system direct you, turn here, turn there, it can direct you towards your intended destination. After a couple of hours, if you've not already reached your destination, you're going to be well on your way to reaching your destination. That can happen in our careers as well. We can just show up for work, we can chat with the coworkers, we can take care of our email, take care of whatever project we're working on, and just kind of do that day in and day out. And at the end of the year, at the end of five years, we may not be where we thought we would be. We might just be wandering. We might be drifting throughout our career. Telling that story reminds me of a situation a few years back. I was a network manager and uh, a director of mine came and was asking me advice about promoting somebody in a different department. And they were telling me, well, this individual has 11 years of experience. And I pointed out to my director, actually, they don't have 11 years of experience. They have one year of experience 11 times. They didn't go after new training, new certifications. They just did the same thing over and over and over again. But here's the paradox. After all, we, we have to go into work. We have to work on our projects. We've got to answer email. We've got to do those daily tasks. So the question is, if we have to do all of that stuff, how do we advance our careers? How do we move the ball down the field, if you will? And the one word answer I would offer to that question is goals. We need to have clearly defined goals to help us progress in our career. And goal setting is something that I've been involved with for many years, way back in the 1980s. I started reading Zig Ziglar, and in the 1990s, I read a lot of Anthony Robbins materials, went to their seminars, actually did the Anthony Robbins Firewalk. That was a fun experience. But I wanna to talk to you about goal setting, specifically in your Cisco career. Setting goals, not only helps you achieve those goals one of these days, it can make you better and more effective in your job. For example, let's say that you set a goal to become a CCNA, a Cisco Certified Network Associate, and you go out and you buy a Cisco press book from Wendell Odom and you start reading it. And you're reading about the Spanning Tree Protocol one evening. Well, when you get to work the next day, you get curious about the Spanning Tree Protocol. You give some show spanning hyphen tree commands on your Cisco Catalyst switches. You start determining which of my switches is the root bridge. What are the states of these ports? Are they forwarding? Are they blocking? Who's the designated port? And so on. By moving in the direction of your goal, you developed what's referred to as sensory acuity you became acutely sensitive to your environment. And because you were focused on the spanning tree protocol the night before, suddenly you recognize that in your environment. You recognize that that switch, it's participating in the spanning tree protocol. And you got curious about it and you started giving commands to learn more about it. That's what goals can do for us. Not only can they get us to that goal, but along the way they can make us more effective, more productive in our day-to-day -day jobs. And I mentioned earlier that I've been doing goal setting for many years. And if you want to really get into goal setting in a big way, I recommend materials from Zig Ziglar, from Brian Tracy, from Anthony Robbins, and there's plenty more out there. Those are some of the people that I've used personally. But if you don't even want to wait to go through a big book or some sort of a self-study program from one of those gentlemen, let me give you a few steps that you could get started with right now. Here are some basic steps to goal setting. And I should say at the outset, to have a well-rounded life, you want goals in different areas of your life, not just Cisco specific. But this video series is about helping you succeed in your Cisco career. So while I absolutely think that you should have goals for your physical body, for your emotions, for your relationships, for your spirituality, for your finances. I want you to be more well-rounded in life, not just focus on Cisco, but we're focused on Cisco in this video series. So let's say that we want to get into a goal-setting process. A first step we can take is to dream. 
And by dream, here's what I want you to do. I want you to find yourself a nice, comfortable place to relax. Maybe go in to your home, find a recliner where there's nobody around. Oh, just sit down in that recliner, relax, take a few deep breaths, maybe close your eyes. And I want you to dream, where do you want your career to be five years from now? Let's pretend you're 27. I remember 27. Let's say that you're 27 and you were dreaming where you wanted to be when you were 32 years old. What did you want to be doing in your career? Did you want to be in management? Did you want to be a CCIE? Think about it. Where do you want to be in five years? Once you dream it, then we're going to move on to step number two, which is something that the neuro linguistic programming people, the NLPers, call future pacing. Future pacing is vividly imagining yourself at that future you, your future self. Five years from now, imagine that you are that CCIE. You are the, the head of IT in your company or maybe another company. So you know where you are now. You know where you want to go. What's your, because you future paced it, you're vividly imagining where you want to go. Now your task is to examine what has to happen along this line. What has to happen between these two points, where you are now and where you want to go? What has to happen to get you from here to there? And then you play this game of connect the dots. Well, in order to become a CCIE, as an example, maybe the first step is I get my CCNA. And then I go after my CCMP. I take the route exam and the switch exam and the T-shoot exam. And maybe I take some CCIE training courses. Maybe I build a home lab. You can have all these identifiable steps that will get you towards your goal. Now, you can look back and say, how did I get here? Oh yes, I remember, and again, you're imagining this, you can say, I remember that I started off by going out to Amazon.com, I bought this Cisco Press book from Wendell Odom about how to be a CCNA, I studied it, and I was off and going. And as an exercise, you might want to pause the video. Here's what I would like you to do right now, or before you move on. Maybe you're not able to do it right now. Maybe you're in your office, but at some point in the next 24 hours, I'd like you to find that nice, comfortable place Oh, relax. Think about where you want to be in five years. Make it your long-range goal. You want to have this long-range goal and then future pace it. Imagine you're there. Imagine you've reached it and look back and identify at least three intermediary steps that you took to get you to that long-range goal. Maybe the first step you took was to get the CCNA. Maybe the next step you took was to get your CCMP. Maybe the next step you took was to attend a CCIE boot camp. I want you to identify your short range goals. You see, one of the challenges can be if we come up with this lofty long range goal, it can seem so far off in the distance, so unattainable from our perspective right now, we can just lose our drive. We can lose our motivation to get there. But if we identify here's the next step and the next step and the next step, it suddenly seems much more achievable. Think about it. If I get in my car and I start driving through the night, I can drive 200 miles overnight. Am I able to see 200 miles from my destination as I'm pulling out of my driveway? No, I can see maybe 20 feet in front of me thanks to the headlights. But I know I can get to that next 20 feet. And when I get there, my headlights are shining 20 feet ahead of that. I go another 20 feet and another and another and another. Eventually, after a few hours, I've traveled that 200 mile distance one little bit at a time. You don't need to know all the answers to get you to your CCA right now. You just need to have a plan that can eventually get you there and take the first step. And to sum up what we've talked about so far, we said we want to start off by dreaming. Dream where you want to be in five years. Step number two is future pace. Imagine you're already there. Look back and identify at least three things that you would have to do to get you to that future self. Number three is let's plan it out. Let's be detailed about what we're going to do next. Let's not have just a, a wish, some general sense that I'm going to grow in my career. I'm motivated. No, let's have a plan as to exactly what we're going to do next. One way to do planning that I really am a big fan of is to do something called mind mapping. 
You can do this on paper. There are lots of mind mapping applications that you can use. Personally, I use an application called MindNode. That's available on Mac OS X, but there's plenty of applications out there. You might want to do a web search for mind mapping applications or just do it on paper. But let me walk you through the basic process of mind mapping. You start out with your central goal in mind. In fact, let's go out to the Mind Node software right now and take a look at how we would start constructing a mind map, maybe to become a CCIE. We can start the mind map by drawing a box or a circle in the middle of the page and writing in our long-term goal. Then, radiating out from that long-term goal, we can draw lines representing our short-term goals, and we label those lines. Then, radiating out from each short-term goal, we can identify the resources we need to reach that goal, the people we need to work with, the tasks that we need to perform. And instead of you watching me type everything out in a complete mind map, let's go ahead and jump to a screen where I'll show you a basic mind map for reaching a goal of earning your CCIE and route switch as an example. Here we see the complete mind map, and we might want to be even more detailed than this, but this is a basic mind map that would get us to that five-year goal in about four and a half to five years. And as a fourth step, after we've done our dreaming, our future pacing, our planning, number four is to take action. Newton's first law of motion says that an object at rest tends to stay at rest and an object in motion that tends to stay in motion. He didn't use those exact words. We've modernized the way he phrased it, but that was the gist of it. By taking action, we not only get a little bit done, we create momentum, which is going to lead us on to the next action and the next and the next and so on. And I want to conclude each of these video segments from this point on in the video series with something I call a tale from the trenches. Since I've worked in the IT industry for well over two decades now, I've got a lot of stories that I could tell, and I thought I would try to come up with a personal story relating to each chapter's topic. Here we've been talking about goal setting, and what I thought I might do just for fun was to look back on some of my old goal setting notes, because I've been doing goal setting for many years, and just share some of those results with you. For example, I found a goal that I made on May 24, 2002. It was to write a book on Cisco Technologies. In my first Cisco Press book, it came out February the 13th, 2004. On June 1, 2005, I set a goal of earning my CCA voice certification, and I passed the voice lab on my second attempt on March 28, 2012. On January 5, 2009, I set a goal to write a Cisco Press book covering one of the CCMP courses. In the following year, February 21st, 2010, my CCMP T-Shoot book was published. Do I believe any of these would have happened without setting specific goals for their attainment? Absolutely not. Having these goals in place caused me to make specific choices and take specific actions that would not have happened without those goals. And I hope you've enjoyed this video installment of Your Route to Cisco Career Success, where we've been focusing on goals, your destination address, to put it in networking terms. And this video is really a subset of the chapter, by the same name, from my book, Your Route to Cisco Career Success. So if you want even more details, and if you want to walk through a case study based on the processes we talked about here in this video, you might want to check it out in that book, Your Route to Cisco Career Success. I look forward to seeing you in the next video, in uh, chapter number two, where we take a look at how we can deal with life, when life gets in the way. How do we respond to life's inevitable interruptions in our carefully designed plan? And how do we continue marching forward to our ultimate goal? We'll see you then.